Hello, today I'm speaking to Paul Gibson of Oracle and we're going to have a conversation about risk management and compliance. So, you know, you've previously argued quite passionately for a single enterprise-wide risk framework. So why is that framework now more important than ever? Okay, uh, I think you really need to look at the way some of the banks have evolved in terms of their sort of system development. And if you look at most of the banks, they've been profitable for a long time. They didn't have to worry about enterprise architecture. And as long as they were delivering the benefits to the individual business or meeting specific regulatory requirements, that was okay. Business was, business was good. I think what we've now seen is, you know, since late 2007, 2008, is that that's simply not working. You, you take the picture of Lehman's or you take the picture of uh, Northern Rock, for instance, it, they, they didn't have a good grasp of what their risk was. They couldn't really bring things together in a quick fashion. They didn't even know what their exposure to particular counterparties was. So really the whole element of risk uh, has become more focused and, 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 and how do you get there? The enterprise risk framework can enable you to start to bring those processes and data elements together. Cobbled with the speed of regulatory change now that's coming in, people can't afford to go and redo specific applications every time. It's, it's, it's getting too expensive. So really that's where I see now we're seeing an absolute necessity for some sort of overriding framework that allows risk management to be treated holistically. So when you talk about the next level of enterprise risk intelligence, you know, are you talking about wholesale system replacement? No, no, I think that would be totally over ambitious. Um, I think if you look at the way that the, that the banks have evolved and the investment they've put into existing systems, they do some things extremely well. For instance, people really don't have a problem with their models, with their calculations. They've, they've spent a lot of intellectual property on that for their credit risk exposures, their market VAR, etc. So it's really not the calculations which is causing the problem, it's how do you reuse that data in a uh, framework which is transparent, auditable, and trusted. And that's really where we're bringing in the enterprise framework, is looking at an overlay on top of what they're doing all, uh, already, but rationalizing those processes, rationalizing the data, reusing data as an asset. I think I've said that before, but it's very, very important. The reuse of data is a concept which most people haven't embraced to date. They've looked at source data, and they've looked at making that pure in order to feed the engines, but they haven't looked at it logically to say, okay, well, what regulatory requirements require what information? What management requirements re require what information? So by putting the framework on top, it allows those processes to be utilized in a auditable and transparent manner. So are you seeing a change in, in IT budgets? I mean, is compliance now seen as a, as a change the bank activity rather than a, a run the bank activity? It's a good question. I think it, it varies. Um, you know, I think that every bank has to spend money on compliance. Uh, you know, the, 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 those budgets are being approved immediately. Um, but really, we're seeing a difference in how that money is being applied. A lot of the banks, an increasing number of the banks, are taking it towards a change the bank requirement. And I think really that's largely driven by the fact that the tactical approach is becoming just too expensive. The number of changes that are taking place within the bank together with the fact that more and more data like liquidity information, credit information, and stress testing, et cetera, are, are forcing data to come together means that a new approach needs to be taken. So we are seeing certain banks, the less enlightened ones, still sticking to the tactical uh, approach. Maverick days are over in terms of where the banks are uh, you know, just making unlimited profits with unlimited liquidity. All those days are over. So they've got to much, run a much more efficient operation.